As a part of our Pan-India Roadshow series on Leaders of Tomorrow, we cover all corners of the country. But today we find ourselves in the geographic center point of pre-partition India. We're in the city of Nagpur, where we decode how the Orange City has become ripe with possibilities with respect to its logistics sector. Have a look. So to dive right in, and uh, Devendra said, I'd love to start with you, all right? Given all the recent geopolitical volatility that is surrounding the state of Maharashtra, how would you characterize Nagpur's current economic importance, current strategic value in today's climate? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nagpur is the uh, capital city of the region of Vidarbha in Maharashtra. And uh, now the state is being run from Nagpur. That is the importance we have. And over the years we have seen what development means to a region or how development can bring prosperity to a region. The first, uh, in terms of infrastructure, we have seen a transformation in our region. We are gifted with Samruddhi Express, which takes just 12 hours by road to touch the metro city of almost 3 million plus people, such a big consumer market. So that gives a lot of opportunities to the agri growers of this region, whether it is vegetable, whether it is oranges or whether it is rice or other products, millets. So that because of Samruddhi Express, we have the access. For commuting, we have the metro train available to the city much ahead of time. Absolutely. We could witness a lot of changes uh, taking place as regard to the development of infrastructure is concerned and uh, decision making is concerned. We could see a lot of education institutes coming to Nagpur. Mm -hmm. We have the IIM, the only IIM in Maharashtra at Nagpur. We have the uh, Indian Institute of Information Technology, Triple IT at Nagpur, the National Law School. We have the NIPER being announced, but the construction is yet to start. We have AIMS. So a lot of these institutes they add value to our city. And we have, uh, from because I had a council called Vidarbha Economic Development Council. And since 27 years, we are striving for the development of the region. And we have a desire that Nagpur should be an education hub. So Absolutely. Uh, I think that deserves a round of applause, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Nagpur is being developed now with Samruddhi Express as a big logistic hub. Uh, I would share with you there are so good logistic parks which have now constructed around the city of Nagpur. Recently, we took a delegation to one of the parks owned by a local entrepreneur called uh, Mr. Agarwal. And uh, it is consisting of almost a capacity of 1.8 million square feet with all the, with many multinational companies taking space there. Like I was told, Royal Enfield accessories are being distributed to 36 countries from that place. Mm -hmm. So now it's a pride for Nagpur. 36 countries, the accessories like maybe a helmet or shoes or jacket, you know, this Royal Enfield uh, lovers, they buy a lot of things like that. So that is being distributed not only in the country, but 36 other countries being exported from Nagpur. So it's a pride for our city. Mm -hmm. So like that, that premise has a lot of other uh, uh, multinational companies who have taken the place on hire. So I believe such logistic parks have immense uh, uh, potential in Nagpur. Like that, we would like to have 100 parks in the city. As a snack manufacturer, you are legendary. And the interesting thing is that Avin Nagpur is home to not just Haldi Ram, but whether it be ice cream maker Dhinshas, whether it be Ayurvedic giant Viko. You know, all of these companies are deeply cherished brands that are appreciated globally. So what's the draw? Why do they find a home base in Nagpur? Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. And uh, why they find base in Nagpur? I think everyone started in Nagpur, and they grew with the city. We grew with the city, and we have seen the city grow, and we are still seeing it uh, to grow, like Sir was saying. So many things are happening. And 
we are very happy and excited about it because this helps us grow as well. We want, uh, we want a lot of business to come to Nagpur so that we can grow with the city itself. So uh, what I would like to say is that uh, these brands have grown with the city. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I think when we historically uh, talk about Nagpur, we can't possibly have a conversation, Shiv Kumar, about Nagpur without mentioning Mehan. And Mehan, of course, refers to the multimodal international hub airport of Nagpur. And it was the flagship project that was aimed at really boosting industrial development. You know, has it lived up to investor expectations and, you know, industry aspirations, sir, in your view? Uh, Mehan, per se, as a, as a project, it's a flagship project of uh, Vidarbha. Uh, honestly, it has not so far uh, lived up to the expectations of what people might want it to be. However, uh, having said that, it has uh, been one of the highest employment generators also, mm -hmm. uh, the SEZ per se, which has been uh, a home to various IT companies uh, who have not only brought back children who lived here, they, they have uh, over a period of time had migrated to Hyderabad, Bangalore and Pune. Absolutely. Most of them have come back. Uh, in terms of the original objective of a multimodal hub airport at Nagpur and an air cargo complex, uh, that dream still remains to be achieved. But then the positive side is that the uh, airport has now been awarded to GMR. GMR is in the process of taking over the airport. We have had a round of uh, discussion with GMR already. They are absolutely upbeat about having one of the finest air cargo complexes here in this city because this is what is lacking. Right. Uh, right. We have a completely uh, operational uh, dry port, uh, an ICD and inland container depot which takes care of the global trade of this region. Uh, but then an air cargo complex is something that is missing which the industry here wants desperately. One must keep in mind that this is one of the finest points that Nagpur has. You will not find a single city in the country which will boast of an SEZ, a rail terminal, an air cargo complex and a national highway in the periphery of only 200 meters. Yeah. So this is one absolute location uh, advantage that any industry will uh, always find. And once you have uh, this air cargo operational, the all modes of transport will be available here. Well, absolutely. And I bring you in, sir, Devendra, if I could have you comment on some of Shiv Kumar's observations, because I think early projections around Mehan were that it would bring, uh, you know, the population of Nagpur to increase by upwards of 12 million people by way of direct employment, by way of indirect employment. Where are we on the track to hitting that target? Let me share with you the approximate figure of people being employed in Mehan of all classes around 60,000 people at the moment mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we are targeting as a city around at least minimum 1 lakh people should be employed maybe in a period of two, a year or two. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of hurdles but still the employment potential what we had envisaged uh, it has not met its expectation and uh, uh, we have around uh, 800 acres of land still uh, available in the SEZ. Mm -hmm. You know, it is now almost 20 years since we are marketing and or promoting Mihan. But still we have 800 acres of land mm -hmm. available for sale in the special economic zone. It's time for a short break, but we bring you more coverage of our leaders of tomorrow's springboard in the city of Nagpur on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to our continued coverage of the Leaders of Toronto Nagpur Springboard, wherein we caught up with industry movers and shakers to decode how the Zero Mile Orange City has blossomed into a logistics hub in the country's heartland. If there is a product in Nagpur that markets itself 
I believe it's the Orange Farms, right? So the city of Nagpur, the Orange City, its Orange Farms are simply legendary. And when you do a little bit of research, I believe that the Nagpur Orange Growers Association, they have an installed capacity of over 5,000 metric tons of fruit per annum. So it is clearly the country's leading fruit marketplace. So Avin, when you've got this food manufacturing and food processing strength on the one hand, and then you have this last mile connectivity sophistication, right, on the other, then how does this disrupt the entire logistics value chain? I think uh, how it disrupts the value chain is uh, since the, uh, since, like Sir was saying, the uh, is the only city in India, which has uh, uh, air cargo, which has uh, national highway, and which has railway connectivity. Yes. So it helps us to reach. Uh, so two years back, we started expanding our outlets in, uh, in and around uh, Nagpur. Huh. And today, we are at uh, 150 outlets. Phenomenal. So that is all thanks to logistical support given by SIRS yeah. to us. Yeah. And uh, it, has, it has helped us grow tremendously. No, oh, absolutely. And, you know, if I could bring you in now, Shiv Kumar, there's a lot of talk about ease of doing business, obviously, you know, in this city. But uh, an interesting point that uh, Devendra just brought up was essentially ease of living, health, sanitation, water supply, education, taxation, right? How does that all factor into this rapidly maturing logistics ecosystem, sir? First is that we should all take pride in the fact that uh, this is the gateway to the uh, rice export uh, that happens and feeds the entire Africa. Yeah. We not only should take pride in feeding Africa, but also Russia. <laughs> Russians eat breakfast of the rice which is grown here. Yeah. So uh, this is the gateway for the export that happens uh, uh, from the entire Central India region. Yeah. Uh, we were talking of, you mentioned in your initial uh, uh, opening remarks that we have been the geographical center of a pre-partition India. So we were the hub originally. Gradually, we emerged into a logistics hub. Right. And we emerged into a logistics hub over a period of time by way of various enablers in terms of uh, there being, uh, we graduated from small godowns to uh, warehouses to um, various private freight terminals to uh, intermodal terminals and then to an inter, uh, to an inland car, uh, container depot as well. So just to give you a perspective, in 2000, when one of the inter uh, inland container depots was started, the projection was of 250 containers per month. Mm -hmm. 250 containers per month was the only potential. But I am very happy to tell you the current uh, import and export scenario that happens from this region is about 20,000 TUs a month. So that is the Phenomenal. kind of growth. Uh, I think that, that this, deserves a round of applause. That this, that this city has provided. Now what has this done? The inland container depots, there are three inland containers depots which are run here in Nagpur. Uh, one by Adani's, the other one by a company called Pristine Logistics and the third one which is a state-run container corporation. What has essentially, what essentially this has done is to provide ease of doing business to various importers and exporters of this region. Mm -hmm. Earlier, they all had to go to Navashiva. The dwell time was uh, immense. There was a 96 hour uh, delay in uh, once the cargo reaches there in terms right. of clearance and things like that. Now, what is, there's an ease of doing business because now uh, an exporter like Haldiram just has to sit in office, call for a container, stuff it and give it give it off and in 36 hours it reaches the port and is loaded. So this is the kind of ease of doing business that it provides. Sir, if it, I may add, uh, now since the ICD is there in Nagpur, we are able to stuff the container and seal it at our premises itself. Absolutely, absolutely. Phenomenal. So this is not only in Nagpur, but what have we done over a period of time as uh, most of Madhya Pradesh now uses Nagpur. Most of Chhattisgarh now uses Nagpur, part of Orissa and part of Telangana also. So this by itself has transformed this city from being a hub to a logistics hub. So that is how the imports and exports are taking place. You'll be surprised to note that uh, solar plants which have been uh, uh, commissioned in Riva, 
the entire solar panels have been imported here in Nagpur and from here it has gone all the way to Riva. Ultratech cement, all its raw material comes to Nagpur and then goes to Madhya Pradesh. So, so this is the kind of potential. For example, plants set up in Oman, which have been manufactured by uh, Jindal's uh, based out of Chhattisgarh, the eastern side of Chhattisgarh, come to Nagpur and from here they are sent to Oman. So this is the kind of hub that this has uh, become over a period of time. And people do not come to Nagpur only because that enabler is present here. They will come here only when there is a good school, only when there is good infrastructure, only when there is good mobility, only when there is good sanitation. The ease of living is there. Nagpur actually is growing now because we have all the enablers in terms of the policy and the infrastructure in place. The, in the, the attractiveness in terms of industrial investment has gradually taken off over the last five, seven years as Devendra also mentioned. In the last five, seven years there has been tremendous interest in terms of uh, not only Mihan but also the other industrial estates in the region. Uh, and all this has happened only because um, personal mobility is present uh, in terms of the metro. Uh, uh, NMC is striving hard to become one of the cleanest city. It is comp competing in the uh, uh, Sarvekshan Abhiyan, the Swachh uh, City Abhiyan. So there are citizens who are working towards it. No, absolutely. And I want to build on some of your observations, Shiv Kumar, and coming to you now, Devendra. Uh, I think there are now a series and a whole slew of startups that are emerging in the logistics space that are not just modernizing, but really monetizing this logistics value chain. But for any startup ecosystem to succeed, it of course requires the ready availability of top talent. So do you agree with Shiv Kumar in that, you know, Nagpur is now beginning to experience a reverse brain drain? with you know, generations coming back, or are, are we continuing to fall victim to Mumbai and Pune and the supposedly bigger, brighter opportunities? The city lacks entrepreneurship. That is the biggest challenge to the sense of entrepreneurship. So this is very generation to foster in our next generation. If not, this city will hub retirement. In Nagpur, there is a entrepreneurship, but I want to add to Sir that now, Sir, we are seeing talent in Nagpur, which has been a issue for 10 years ago, that Nagpur has not wanted to come to Nagpur, that people didn't want to take a job, they 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 didn't want to take a job, and they didn't want to take a job. You have seen this, this change. So, I want to ask you, Shiv Kumar, that, Shiv Kumar, अगर बदलाव आ रहा है, भले ही धीरे आ रहा हो, right? Sir, do you think this is a knee-jerk reaction, you know, to the immediate present, or is this a trend that's here to stay, sir? This this is something which is here to stay. थोड़ा बहुत जो देवेंद्र ने कहा कि entrepreneurship की कमी है, थोड़ा सा इसमें एक आपको positive side भी देना चाहूँगा। जी कि ये बात बिल्कुल सही है कि entrepreneurship की सख्त कमी है। but uh, of late, particularly uh, IT के आने के बाद में, ऐसे कई युवा हमारे यहाँ के भी हैं, और uh, in particular after the COVID pandemic, जिनको ये समझ में आया है कि भाई अपने शहर में, अपने घर में रह के काम करना जो है, वो ज़्यादा अच्छा है, बजाय इसके कि वहाँ दूर रहो और यहाँ माँबाप अकेले हैं, तो जो COVID के pandemic में जो लोगों ने जो तकलीफ देखी, जो कठिनाई देखी, उसके बाद जो उनको यहाँ आने के बाद ये समझ में आया कि एक तो work from home था ही था तो उस समय work from home करने के बाद में opportunity भी यहाँ की दिखते गई यहाँ का comfort दिख गया comparison हो गया कि भाई बॉम्बे में रहते थे गुड़गांव में रहते थे पुणे में रहते थे तो दो घंटे थपड़े खाते थे घर से निकल के ऑफिस जाने में और वापस आने में कोई family life थी नहीं तो यहाँ मालूम पड़ा पंद्रह मिनट में कहीं से कहीं पहुँच रहे हैं वहाँ पर आराम से और अच्छा कासा मतलब आगे के because this is one of the cities जहाँ पे infrastructure is created ahead of demand नहीं तो पुणा बॉम्बे दिल्ली में तो जो है पहले demand आती है उसके बाद infrastructure की planning होती है हमारे यहाँ infrastructure पहले बन गया है ताकि दस साल बाद भी जो demand आएगी उसके लिए ठीक ही रहेगा तो यहाँ कई ऐसे बच्चे हैं जो सोच रहे हैं कि यहाँ से काम करके और जिन्होंने शुरू कर दिया है मैं लॉजिस्टिक सेक्टर की बात करूं तो लॉजिस्टिक सेगमेंट में भी ऐसे कई सारे हैं जो नॉट ओनली इन हार्ड कोर वेयर हाउसिंग और इन ट्रांसपोर्टेशन बट इन वेरियस वैल्यू एडेड सर्विसेज जिन्होंने अपने काम शुरू किए हैं 
जो अपने आप को सक्सेसफुली उसमें काम करना चाह रहे हैं जो देख रहे हैं और जो कर भी रहे हैं अच्छे से so we are completely out of time but uh, devendra avin shiv kumar a huge round of applause to all three of you wow i'm pooja jain signing off from the leaders of tomorrow springboard in the city of nagpur we'll see you next time